Welcome back. And I continue our conversation right now with former Chrysler and Home Depot CEO Bob Nardelli. He was also a top executive at General Electric for decades, uh, more than 30 years, Bob. Yeah. Talk to us about General Electric. It's really hard as a person who used to work for GE myself, yes. uh, having, having been at CNBC when GE was the parent for 20 years. It's hard to watch GE at the price that it is and, and, and the smaller yeah. company that it is versus what it was. Well, I think for both of us, Maria, it's heartbreaking to yeah. see what has happened to this legendary company, right? I mean, uh, over 125 years, one of the, well, the only original company still on the Dow today. And uh, I know both of us put a lot of sweat equity into it, and we couldn't have been prouder to be part of the General Electric family. But the loss in market value at this point, I mean, it's been cut in half. Cut in half. And uh, I don't think anybody would have predicted that uh, several years ago that we would see GE where it is today. Now, you know, John Flannery stepped in about a year ago, and, uh, you know, he has an unbelievably challenging task in front of him both for, you know, to try to get profitability up, uh, to be able to get cash flow. You know, that's going to be a big challenge. Obviously, he had to cut the dividends in half. Uh, he has put several businesses. He talked about $20 billion of disposition on the table. Hopefully, you know, he's anticipating that while that will, while those companies generated cash, that he's going to get five to six times more cash by, by disposition to go forward to be able to fund pension liabilities, dividends, and reinvestment in businesses. So it's a tall order to be able to dig yourself out of the trench. Well, are these the right moves? Because I think along the way, as they were selling industry, you were thinking, well, why are they selling this business? Why are they selling this industry? Yeah. Are, is it the right move at this point to keep selling off assets? Well, I, I know, I'm not sure he's got a, uh, an alternative okay. to that right now. I, I guess if you look back, though, uh, you know, conglomerates seem to be out of favor right now, and, and I don't think they are. But from my experience, 30 years, you know, and seeing the benefits of the, of the various businesses where you've got various levers, you know, you've got cyclicality, different businesses, and, and of course, Jack was a master at, uh, at that. So I think conglomerates really boil down to the ability for management, the board, to effectively run those. Uh, if you don't have industrial experience, if you don't have the understanding and the importance of granularity of metrics and day-to-day -day understanding in globality and, and technology and reinvestment, if you aren't disintermediating yourself, you're opening the door for an activist, and obviously you're going to have to pair off those businesses because you can't be competitive. I think that's part of the root of what we saw happen at GE. By the way, that's exactly what happened to GE. They got Tryon uh, as an activist to try to, to try to get them to make moves. And I don't know, do you think the stock ever recovers to its glory days? Um, I, I won't predict the stock. I think, uh, you know, they, they're, they're, in a, they're in a very tough situation. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, they're going to have to really probably continue with the divestitures to try and, try and generate more cash. <laughs> Uh, the big question we saw with one of the key analysts out there is, are they going to have to cut the dividend again to be able to maintain cash flow for reinvestment in pensions and so forth? Wow, that, so, would, that would be hard it's uh, very for hard. shareholders if yeah. they cut the dividend again. Yes. That would certainly uh, Let's hope not. impact the stock as well. Right, we'll. We'll keep watching that. Let's talk about the auto business for a moment. Yeah. Uh, you spent so much time there at, at uh, obviously, uh, Chrysler. Your thoughts on where we are in terms of... Uh, growth in the business. I mean, I know autonomous vehicles are talked about and electric vehicles are talked about, but are they actually resonating with people? Are yeah. people buying them? Well, it's interesting. You know, I, I got into the uh, car industry. We were at about 17 million SAR seasonally adjusted rate. I saw it fall within, you know, 18 months to 9.6. Wow. And, uh, you know, I think that forced the auto industry to do a lot of things, reduce discounts, don't extend terms. Unfortunately, what you see now is a little creep back into lending, uh, reducing you know the rates with which you, you, it takes to get into an automobile, 70 month terms. So they're falling back a little bit into that. Now, we just saw a couple of analyst reports in some car shows where they're going to pare back on sedans. They're going to um, you know eliminate the number of small cars. It's great. Uh, I was at the pump Saturday filling up. It was $3.75. So we got to be careful. We don't put ourselves back into a $4 a gallon. People are going to be looking for more economical cars. We know today that, like Fiat Chrysler, 80% of their operating profits are from Jeep 
and from the Ram 1500 truck. Wow. Not from anything. 85%. 80%. Holy moly. Yeah. And, and, and look what Ford just did. Ford getting completely out of the car business. Yes. They are only are going to be producing trucks. Yeah, I, I hope that's, that... That's so <laughs> amazing to me. I hope they're not out of cycle, you know, and if we see gas prices, we talked about oil a little bit earlier, uh, but if we see that, then we're going to be out of sync again uh, with what the consumer wants versus what the auto industry wants to provide. I do think the auto industry has made tremendous progress in safety, number one. Safety in the automobiles. We saw what Mary Bauer did. She really raised the bar for the entire industry. She at did a, GM. At GM. She did a great job. Uh, I think we're seeing a lot more technology migrate into the car, lane control, uh, you know, uh, safety devices for, for if you look at collisions, close collisions. Uh, in, so I'm really pleased with what they're doing there. I think uh, fuel efficiency, whether the CAFE standard gets rolled back or not, the auto industry is still going to be looking at that. A lot of uh, hybrid cars where you have a combination of electric and a 1.9 liter engine that's going to keep the batteries charged continuously. So I'm really excited about where the industry is going. I think it's got a bright future. I think uh, you know the leaders of those those automobile cars are, are really focused on markets and consumers right now. But will the, will the leaders of tomorrow be the same leaders of today in terms of the auto business or will we see Tesla, Apple, Google yeah. becoming car companies? Well, I think you, you make an excellent point. I think Google and Apple understood very quickly that we're going to focus on technology and they quickly discovered that making a car, building a car, assembling a car is tougher, more challenging than they thought. Tesla's kind of coming to that situation. You know, they're going to be laying off, what, 25, 3,000 employees. Uh, hopefully... 9% of the workforce. Hopefully to make a profit. I mean, they've been at this 15 years, so it'd be good to kind of see profitability come out of Tesla. Tesla's burning cash like yeah, nobody's they're, business. They're now switching sure. to batteries, so we'll see.